I know you heard of the horror stories of tenants being problematic and causing a havoc in people's rental properties and just killing, destroying the place entirely. But is that the narrative that we really want to stick to? I myself have seen my parents went through certain issues with past tenants, my uncles. I did not let that deter me in terms of where I wanted to be and how to really get the opportunity in order for me to run a successful rental business. So I'm going to cover five things that will help you throughout the screening process that you should consider in order for you to avoid, I should say mitigate the risk in order for you to actually run into these problems. Number one is the credit score. The credit score is a metrics that is used in order for banks to determine whether they should let a person borrow a money or not. Have they been responsible with their spending, with utilizing credit? You should not miss this factor at all the only times i would say for you to not consider the credit as much if it's if this person has no credit history they have not worked at all but if they have some form of credit history you should definitely look into their credit score even if you don't have them do a formal credit report that you're running you should at least be able to pull that from credit karma before they actually run and pay a fee in order for them to process that report the credit history is not going to tell you everything of course and just because someone has a high credit score doesn't mean automatically that they should be the person that you pick. Or if they have a low credit score, it doesn't mean you completely neglect them. It's just a number that's calculated by some computer system and sometimes it doesn't give you a full story. Number two is their income. Make sure they're actually producing some form of income. I typically ask for three months worth of W-2 statements if the person is earning some income if there are a 1099 i have never rented to someone who is self-employed or running their own business i've only came across one person who did apply and i asked for a year's worth of income so that way it feels more substantial because when you're operating your own business you don't get paid every two weeks or every week it could fluctuate depending on what type of business that you're in and actually what are you running so three months is typically what i ask for and if they don't have that for example if they're retired on getting some supplemental income, such as Social Security, I did have one tenant that actually had that. They were a family of three, and the grandma, the mother, she pretty much was retired, so she was getting Social Security income plus pension money. She was good. She was earning about fifteen to seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars by herself, and plus the other applicant that was applying for the unit. She was earning over 2000 plus and then she had a husband. So their income was substantial enough for me to really consider that. You're looking at what else does the person is earning on a consistent basis that's going to allow them to feel more, that's going to allow you to feel more comfortable in terms of renting to them on a financial standpoint. Third thing I want you to consider is the bank statement. The bank statement is crucial because it shows the spending habits of the person. You got to look at three months or more. The reason I say or more is because sometimes the three months, they may have been something that happened in one month where it caused the person to have a hiccup and they had to get back on their feet. So therefore, you want to look at a, a bigger history to make sure that it's been consistent. They've been consistently saving. They Their accounts should not be declining because that is a bad sign. If they're not having an increase of saving month over month and it's declining, what makes you think they can afford your place, right? That means they're not responsible, especially the fact that you possibly are charging a higher rent. I mean, I don't assume nobody going to a low rent. If you're moving, typically you are going to some place where you want bigger space and rental value has increased over time. They should be making more and should feel more responsible when it comes to their savings and it should not be in a decline, but much more of an increase. And if it's not, you should ask why. And if six months you can't get a picture of exactly if there's a hiccup and, it, and you still don't feel confident, then ask for more time. Ask for a full year because there might have been something that happened in six months like they were getting back on their feet. But if you look at the whole year picture, things seem much more confident. Fourth thing you have to do this is called the NTN report. It is a legal form. Most realtors, they are familiar with that system where you actually... They, they will have to input their social security, fill out a full application, and then the realtor will probably be the one that actually runs this once they receive the application because it gives you a full breakdown of any background check, any misdemeanors, any criminal acts that they did in the past, as well as the credit history. And it also gives you an analysis of whether this person is a good tenant or not. But I don't solely rely on that because sometimes... It can calculate things. Again, it's a computer system. I can't fully rely on it for me to make uh, decisions whether this 
person is financially responsible or financial fit for exactly where I need them uh, to be. The fifth thing I want you to consider is referrals, referrals, referrals. Ask for their previous landlord. You want to speak to that previous landlord to find exactly what it is that, you know, how were they as tenants? Were they good? Were they not? Most of the time, I find that if they either neglect or they had a bad relationship with their landlord, it might cause some havoc with you as well. Of, of course, there was one use case I had where the person was financially responsible, but their previous landlord... I couldn't get a hold of them, but their financials were strong. Credit was strong, income was strong, and everything else. But they they, they, they were at least honest with me. They said they didn't have a great relationship with their landlord, which I like too, because it shows some accountability that they had. They were clear and they didn't try to beat anything around the bush. They were straightforward about it, and they said they didn't have a great relationship with their landlord. That's part of the reasons why they're moving. My experience with that tenant... They were good financially. Like they paid on time on the first. <laughs> I got the money either before or on the first. The latest I got it was probably the second or third day of the month. They were very responsible. But the only thing is they did nag about a couple of things, which I'm assuming probably that's the same thing that they did deal with their other landlord. And the landlord was either denied to fix it. And then they ran into a lot of confrontational issues because we did get into a little bit of confrontation, but it was still professional. When I say that is it was respectful. We had differences and everything. To this point, I even uh, saw uh, one of the persons that were living in the apartment and everything at the time. I, I saw him at a park, which I go work out here and there. We had a good conversation, and I knew he was going to have a baby at one point. I even sent gifts. So, you know, it was a, still a good, respectful relationship, even though on a business front, you're going to have some differences. But as long as it's respectful, it can happen. Programs. I'm not going to deny the fact that programs, I had a bit of a bad experience with a program, not financially. Everything was paid for, damages were covered, no issues there. But in terms of the disrespectfulness that happened with someone in a program, it did occur to me as well. Now, I'm not going to completely negate it that I won't do it again because it's a number of factors that can affect that. Because I had a friend of mine who had somebody from Section 8 put into a program not only did this lady was responsible, I went, checked out her apartment because I had to do some repairs to help my friend out, and she kept it clean. She was the cleanest unit throughout the whole building, very responsible and everything. She was so nice, offered water and everything, and she paid everything on time according to what my my friend had said. When it was time for her to move, not only was she ahead of what the state was willing to supply? She paid for everything up front. And she said, once you get the money, then you can apply it for whatever my month's coming. Because Section 8 was only covering part of her rental income at that point, which is great. So you can't completely negate programs. And I know in New York City, they are right now paying more than the average rent. Like whatever the market rent is right now, New York City is willing to pay more because they know they have a homeless crisis Therefore, it's something you can look into. If you are getting someone in a program, I do strongly encourage for you to find out who they are. You still want to look at their credit history. You still want to look at their incomes because you want to see that they are responsible. They're not just taking advantage of the program and not doing nothing about it because those people are more likely to be problematic because they have no accountability for themselves. Therefore, they're going to not know how to professionally handle the relationship that they have with you and care for the unit that they have. But when they have some form of responsibility, they are more likely to not mistreat your place as well as mistreat the relationship, the business relationship that you have with them. So those are some of the things that I really think you should consider in order for you to prevent the problem that you have with tenants. Because I'll be honest right now, as I'm scoping around a lot of different real estates, a lot of things I'm seeing is horrible landlords. They make horrible choices with tenants they pick, they have bad relationships, they're not able to maintain a real professional relationship and as well as uh, take responsibility of the space as well. You don't want to be a slumlord at all completely because that can also alter the emotion of the person and may even affect them to not be financially responsible when it comes to making sure that they're paying the rent on time and doing all these things. So you also have to, to do your part and make sure you take care of these things. But right now, with the way the market is, a lot of these homes I'm seeing that are for sale, these tenants are horrible, dirty. It's disgusting sometimes. Some of these places I've seen, I'm like, as a landlord, how can you let your place get to this level? I completely understand sometimes tenants go overboard and you, you don't want to be in all their business, but there should be really like some type of certification that you get before you can even become a landlord because... 
that is part of what's causing a lot of the homelessness, a lot of these issues, a lot of these problems, evictions that are happening because of the fact that you didn't do your due diligence, you allowed certain things to get to that level. We as landlords have to take accountability and stand for making this whole process a lot much more better, making sure people are psychologically being better as well because it's a mind thing, right? If people's mind state change that they know they have to take care of your place, they know they have to be responsible, they got to take care of their credit, their income because no landlord is going to accept me until unless I be responsible, then it's going to change the mindset of a lot of people and us as a community. I was watching this video not too long ago of this uh, man who lived throughout the whole civil rights movements and everything and he was saying how a lot of the welfare programs that came into play, it affected a lot of black homes and communities. But when these people were not on welfare, they would actually have to get jobs, try to educate themselves. And they were playing catch up at that time. It was much worse, worse than, than, than what it is now. They didn't have the, the ability for them to be in mixed mixed different environments with different people. It was completely segregated at the time. And he was saying how the black families were much more successful back then than they were now because they had to take responsibility for themselves, for their families in order for them to get to where they are. So that just shows you as one example of how when you're putting people to a point where you, you're forcing them to really be responsible, it creates better and better communities. But when you got these people on welfare, they, they, they don't have no accountability. The state is paying for everything. And you yourself, you're just letting them go off easy. You're, you're being part of the problem rather than being part of the success. Now, these points I'm, taking, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you doesn't mean they're going to work 100% of the time. I can say that for the five years that I've been a landlord, 100% rent's paid, 100% of damage is covered, no serious problems with any tenants or any issues in that matter. I have a great relationship with all my tenants pretty much over the years, right? One incident I had in the past, but however, it was resolved. We reconciled from business matters. We moved on, and that was pretty much it. I'm just sharing this because I really want to see us as landlords strive, us to do better, as well as tenants on the other side to strive and do better as well. We have to do this as a as a thing together. It can't be on one side. It's a relationship. And if you are influencing things on positive side in that manner, you can help spread this to be a much better rental system. So that way we can reduce the amount of evictions that are happening, reduce the amount of horrible situations with landlords and tenants fighting, and change the psychological of both sides completely. So I do encourage you to try and look into that. So. I hope you took into the account of these five tips that I'm sharing with you when it comes to picking out your tenants. Of course, you want to also do interviews with them, get to know them, and have a feel for it. Part of it is emotional because I, I think a lot of employees, they typically hire people not just from the face value of their resumes and all the skills that they have, but the soft skills soft skills is just as important as well. So having that ability to communicate with them and they seem to have an understanding of how you're trying to operate your your business because this rental thing that you're doing you got to think of think about it as a business and treat it as such so therefore you don't want anybody to just come into your business and be able to destroy it have a good run as a landlord and if you're a tenant that's watching this video right now hope you see the other side of what we're dealing with but congratulations if you're just starting off right now as a landlord and looking forward to getting your first rental going peace and love, trust in Jesus, continue to strive doing everything that you do. Have an amazing one. Thank you so much for checking out my video. My goal is to be able to share as much knowledge, wisdom, experience that I've been given privilege from God over the years to be able to give that to you and also be able to receive from you as well. This has this can definitely be a two-way dialogue. It doesn't have to be one way at all. It's just for us to be engaged. And I'm just continuously sharing as things that I see move along the market. So I hope you find insights and your feedback is greatly appreciated as well. How can you support me right now? I have these wristbands. You can get them at luxury.com. I've been selling them from on eBay for quite some time. That's it just says make your statement. It's just a encouraging inspirational message. You can purchase these right now available on there. Eventually it will be spun off to other things and I'll have other products, but that's one way you can do right now. But most importantly is just making sure you receive something from the content I have given. And if you have any feedback, that is probably the most valuable thing I could say you can give to me. So I appreciate it. And I hope 
that we can continue to build a long-term relationship with each other and just grow with one another. Peace. And if you have any questions, definitely drop it below.